Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. People actually do read those advertisements. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> Uh, Madam Chair, it's 4.30. Okay, is Tony ready? I am ready, thank you. Okay. Okay, so we'll call to order the December 14th, 2020 meeting of the Board of Zoning Adjustments. This is our last meeting of the year. If you have not been with us this year, I will tell you that this process works best if you keep yourself muted until your case is called or the case that you're here to speak about is called. And then we will ask you to identify yourself, unmute your phone, turn your camera on, et cetera. Once the case that you're here for has been heard, you do not have to stay for the rest of the meeting. I will swear you in when it's time for you to speak, which just involves you raising your hand and swearing that the truth that you give tonight will be the truth, will be the truth. Uh, we ask that the, the uh, applicants have five minutes to present their case and then any follow up questions after that. And then anybody that's here to speak about any case has three minutes. And we like to be, we, we're pretty liberal with the time uh, unless we feel that you're abusing the time and then we'll, we'll cut it short. We like to make sure that we have as much information as we need, the board members need to decide the case. And so we usually do like to um, ask questions and seek answers um, as appropriate. 
We will first hear from the city on if there's any cases, any preliminary matters that we need to adjudicate before we get into the agenda. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, on the agenda, case number 11, uh, the applicants will be requesting a tabling, and then we do have one appeal, so we'd like to handle the tabling first. Okay, so which is 6235 Western Road. The applicant is requesting a tabling. Can you unmute yourself and identify and state your name for the record? Hi, my name is John Stevenson. Hello, John. Can you raise your right hand? It's where the testimony gets tonight will be the truth, nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do. Okay, go ahead with your request. Yeah, we'd just like to request a tabling. We've received a lot of feedback from the local area commission, Northland Community Council, um, uh, on Wednesday of the week before last. And we'd just like to uh, spend more time to understand their comments and see what, see what kind of changes we might make to our request. That sounds fair. Is there anybody here on the call tonight that was joining to um, speak about the merits of this application? We're going to um, entertain a request for the tabling. Would you like to speak to the tabling issue? This is Dave Paul with the Northland Community Council. Go ahead, um, Mr. Paul, do you, do you raise your right hand, please? Uh, yes, let me get my camera on. Bear with me just one second. It's all right. Well, there. Yes, thank you. You ready? I have my hand raised, even if you can't okay. see it. Okay. Do you <laughs> promise that the testimony you get tonight be the truth? I think about the truth. Please say it, I do. I do. Okay, go ahead with your comments. Uh, I just did want to share, I've spoken with the applicant's representative earlier this week. He did indicate their intent to table. Uh, we are supportive of that in the hopes that we can perhaps uh, talk a little further with the applicant or the representative uh, and refine the application for uh, the best of all parties. And so uh, we have no objection, certainly, to the tabling. Okay. Sounds like that additional time will be will be useful. Is anybody else here to speak on the tabling request? Build a more moves the table. Okay. There's Second. been a there's been a motion and it's been seconded. Please call the roll. My apologies, I didn't turn the speaker on. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jones. Mr. Maleka. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Waldelli. Yes. Mr. Demora. Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey. So for every any if there's any community members on this call, 6235 Westerville Road will not be heard tonight. And you can leave the call and we will send out notices on when that case will be heard in the future. Okay, Jamie, next up. Okay, next up is the appeal. Uh, the property owner at 3432 Eisenhower Road. Mr. York. Okay, do we, do we have the homeowner on the line? Hello? If you're having some kind of computer signal issues, maybe if you can send us a note in the chat or some kind of way to identify that you're here. I want to go ahead and, and unmute all these uh, callers. Maybe that's one of them. 
Okay, do we have the homeowner for the appeal on the line? What's the address, Jamie? Uh, 3432 Eisenhower Road. Mr. and Mrs. York. Okay, I do not see anyone coming forward. Major is, I think what our normal procedure is, is to have a ruling, um, a default ruling that the appeal is um, withheld. The code orders are upheld. I'm sorry, <laughs> the code order is upheld and the appeal is denied. Can we call the roll? Madam Chair, do we want to wait and just postpone until the end to see if they come back before we do this? Um, I I don't know about the city. Um, you know, it's just not us, Bill. It's the city code enforcers right. as well. Okay. All right, hey, Mr. Demora, Mr. Demora, if it makes you feel better, I was in contact with the appellant today, today, who requested to specifically be heard at the tonight's BZA uh, hearing. So I'm shocked okay. he's not here. Okay, I'm fine. Okay, so we will um, uphold the code orders. Uh, let's call the roll. Before we begin, this is Jeff with the City of Columbus Code Enforcement. Uh, I was talking with Jamie and I went by the property earlier, like about two hours ago. And the issue, which was basically a, a fire truck being parked in a residential driveway, had been removed. So, in reality, uh, the violation notice has been complied with. Uh, so, I, I think the reasoning that Ms. York, uh, the appellate, wanted to appeal the violation notice was for any future instances where he may be bringing a fire truck on the property where if we get another complaint, we wouldn't be able to cite. Items. I don't know, you know if that'd be something that would be entertained in the future, but as of now, when I drove by like the two hours before this hearing, the fire truck was nowhere to be seen on the property, in the street, or anywhere. So he uh, has complied with the violation notice. Okay, so we will, Jamie, how do you want us to handle? Uh, we, we can just say the appeal has been withdrawn. Okay. Okay. Appeals. Okay. Appeals have been withdrawn for lack of appearance by the owners. Okay. We will move on to our the first case on the agenda. Am I correct? Yes, you're correct, Madam Chair. Okay. So the first case on our agenda is thirteen twenty Wilson Avenue. 1320 Wilson Avenue. If you are the applicant, please unmute yourself. State your name for the record, please. My name is Lionel Portis. I'm the owner of 1320 Wilson Avenue. How are you doing, Mr. Portis? Please raise your right hand. You, you swear that the testimony you get tonight with the truth and nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do, Madam Chair. Thank you. So we will hear from the city first, and then we'll come back to you. Okay, Madam Chair, uh, 1320 Wilson Avenue is located at the southeast corner of Wilson Avenue and Thurman Avenue. The site is within the Columbus Southside Area Commission and zoned R3 residential. Um, as you can see from the site, the site is developed with a single unit dwelling with an attached single car garage on a corner lot. The dwelling is directed towards Wilson Avenue and access to the garage is from Thurman Avenue. The applicant has received a zoning code violation for adding a gravel parking area and expanded driveway. Uh, the applicant is therefore requesting a variance to allow a gravel surface for parking and maneuvering. Uh, the code section 3312.43 states that the surface of any parking area, including but not limited to parking, loading, or stagnant space, aisle or driveway, shall be designed to control stormwater runoff and be improved with Portland cement, asphaltic, concrete, or other approved hard surface, other than gravel or loose fill. 
Uh, the near south side plan recommends that all development should be landscaped and buffered as appropriate. Street trees and additional landscaping are appropriate for buffering the parking lot area and is therefore recommended by planning. Uh, the Division of Traffic Management has no comments regarding the subject application and the Columbus Southside Area Commission uh, agreed to give the property owner a nine month extension to allow the owner to have time to properly pave it. Therefore, staff is recommending approval as the applicant has agreed to the guidelines in the near south side area plan. Uh, in essence, that, they, that the development should be landscaped and buffered as appropriate. Um, street trees and additional landscaping are appropriate for buffering the lot area. We are asking for the conditions uh, imposed by the Columbus Southside Area Commission in that the gravel surface will be converted to hard surface within nine months of the December 14th Board of Zoning Adjustment Hearing and that the applicant will install landscaping as shown on the site plan. And with that, we'll turn it over to you, Madam Chair. So let me get this. Oh, just really quickly, uh, I sent you guys earlier a supplemental exhibits email. There were three letters of opposition to this uh, proposal. And let me understand, Jamie, because it looks like that the, the request for variance is to allow the gravel parking. And what you're saying is you're not, you don't want to allow the gravel parking except for a nine month period. Correct. Uh, staff has, has traditionally recommended disapproval to gravel parking lots. However, the applicant has agreed with the Southside Area Commission that this was a temporary solution which staff can support as long as it is paved in the future. But but our but our but our approvals are not time limited. So how so there's some background that I can't that's happening that I can't hear. Uh, looks like everyone besides yourself and uh, I are on mute, so hopefully it's not us. Um, yeah, uh, again, we did discuss with a city attorney and you can limit your approvals for certain things other than, you know, a building setback where a building will be built and then you can't take it away. But parking variances, gravel services, anything of a temporary nature that's not solid can be uh, time limited. Oh, okay. That's that. I think I don't think I had that clarification from before. Okay. Yeah, okay. I thought we discussed this after all the, you know, the COVID parking reductions. That, that issue came up and that was brought to the city attorney's attention. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So with that, Mr. Portis, do you have, um, do you agree with the nine month limitation that this gravel will be allowed? Do you agree with that? Yes, Madam Chair. I am. Um, I have full intentions to be in compliance with both this, the um, city council and the um, communities community council I've been um, in close close proximity working with Mr. Ted Welch and I have all intentions of putting in an asphalt parking way. Okay. I just asked if I can have nine months from the time of approval from this meeting. Okay. Okay. Do you have anything else to add? Nothing more than um, I appreciate to come before the panel and, and to be able to discuss my request. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody? Go ahead, Mr. Jones. Yeah, can staff bring up that um, that presentation again? I mean, I'm just curious. I know we rarely do, we don't do gravel parking lots. So that entire area that spans 52 feet is what we're talking about or we're talking about, help me understand. Go ahead, Mr. Portis. It's just the area that's shown in the gray. The 52 feet is the area of the um, yard itself. The um, This isn't really a good site um, projection. From the site, the area that's in the gray is my garage. Or it's okay. the parking lot. Yeah, I think the other picture, yeah, that picture is better yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the area is 20 feet by 24. Okay. So Jamie, help me understand the 20 by 24. He seems like he's over on the lot coverage area too. If he does this even in, well, surface parking doesn't count against lot coverage. But it should, it does <laughs> anywhere else. Uh, surface parking, no, it doesn't. In Whitehall it does. Well, this is the city of Columbus. <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to be mindful of what makes sense and sure. paving your entire backyard almost 
is not okay, and maybe well, I'm not seeing something. Okay, let me. Uh, I'm going to share my my screen just because so I can have the mouse available. Thank you. Um, hold on one second. The area makes up less than one third of my lot. So, Mr. Jones, are you seeing my screen here? Yes. The green is all grass. The only paving area. So you've got a, an approach here, a driveway here, and then this is the parking area. I don't see your mouse moving. You see it now? Yes. Okay. So everything in the blue. You got this this gray approach, the driveway, which is widened. Another kind of diagonal approach, and then this is the parking area. Everything outside in the green is that's just green area. Okay. That that's where I was unclear. It looked like okay. I was I was trying to be clear. Was that whole area being paved, and that would not no. be okay. Right. right. No, sir. We, I, we would all agree on that. So. Okay. okay. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> and and also. How long have you had this gravel parking space? I had it put in place um, probably like August of this year. And it's okay, been going through the, um, and I've been um, looking to get approval and work with the city panel. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak? about this application, please unmute and identify yourself for the record. Ted Welch, 4th District Commissioner, Southside Area Commission. Sir, do you promise that the testimony you get tonight will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Please say it, I do. I do. Okay, go ahead. Um, the uh, Civic, the Columbus Southside, um, uh, or Southside Can, and the, so the Ed, Columbus South by the area. I'm having a hard time understanding. Mr. Or, Mr. Yeah. Welch, Mr. Yeah. Welch, your yeah. internet is breaking up. I don't know what's happening. We, your, your, every other word is going in and out. We can't really hear you. Is there a way you can get to the phone and you can call us? Uh, uh, let me see. I'm sorry, what did you say? Your phone number. Oh, Jamie, can you give them the number? Sure. Are you ready? Yeah. One, six, five, zero. A okay, one six five nine. Six, one seven nine. Four seven nine. Three two zero seven. Okay, one six uh, five four six, seven. Six, nine. Oh. Four seven nine was. Uh, I think you said one seven nine. So I apologize. Three two zero seven. Three two zero. Go ahead and um, mute your computer because otherwise we'll get a big feedback. I'm going to send you the uh, information on the chat. Who, what information, Jamie? Uh, the meeting number and the meeting password. Oh, is I'll there a password too? Yeah. Is there a password, Jamie? I don't see it. Well, I sent it to Mr. Wells privately. Oh, got you. Okay, thanks. Is there anyone else that wanted to speak on this case? Doesn't look like it. It's can I just say not what? 
Can you type your comments into the chat, possibly, on your computer? Okay. The other option is to click on the three dots at the bottom of the screen that say more options. Mm -hmm. Go to Bye. switch audio. You can have them call you. Thank you, Michael. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, turn, your, turn the sound off of your computer. Okay, there we are. I'm, I'm muted on my computer. Turn your speakers off, Welsh. There you go. Okay, go ahead and speak to us. Now we've lost them. We don't hear you if you're speaking. Okay, uh, do, you, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. This is Ted Welch of the uh, Southside Area Commission District 4 Zoning. Okay. And and we let me see if I can mute that mic or something here. This is ridiculous. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Oh my gosh, technology. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's the curse of us or the, or the benefit. Right. And, uh, uh, Ted Welch, uh, Southside Area Commission, District 4 Commissioner Zoning Committee. Uh, Mr. Portis did come before the Edgewood Civic Organization, the Southside TAN Organization, and the um, Columbus Southside Area Commission, and we did vote to have him uh, replace the um, gravel with a hardscape. The consensus was that because we were getting close to um, the weather where asphalt and concrete would not be um, well received on the property as far as curing and so forth, um, the uh, Southside Area Commission decided to give him the opportunity to contact a contractor and have time to put it in properly so that it did not uh, fall apart uh, due to uh, weather-related conditions of the installation. So um, the community uh, will uh, allow him to have the uh, parking area, but it must be consistent with um, the uh, city's uh, ordinances uh, for a hard surface in the city. So okay. That. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Okay. Okay. So that, and we did send the letters of support in where um, they requested a hard, the residents requested a hardscape surface. And okay. then, of course, the city going to ask for landscaping and, and other uh, conditions. Okay. Okay. That sounds, thank you. Thank you okay. for working through our technology challenges. Yes. Maybe I should get one of those smartphones where I don't have to use the computer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think there's anybody else here to speak on this issue. Um, board members, do we have any further questions? 
I'll call the question. Okay, question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Maleka. Yes. Mr. Wobelli. Yes. Mr. Demora. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey. Yes. Variance is granted for nine months. Good luck with your project. <laughs> Um, Madam Chair, might, might I interject one last thing, one, one sure. last comment? Sure. Um, first of all, I want to thank the panel, Mr. Freeze and Mr. Welch, for working with me because of my layman and my naiveness to this process. But um, upon having it installed, do I reach out to the panel or will I have a contact to let them know that it's been installed and inspected properly? How do I close out the process? I, I, I'm uncertain about that. Uh, Mr. Portis, I'll follow up with you uh, with an email tomorrow and a, and a board order, and then you'll have to come in and get a permit. But we can discuss uh, tomorrow if you'd like. Thanks so much. You guys have a good holiday and stay safe. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Case number two on the agenda, 4345 West Marcuson Avenue. Is the applicant here? Can you unmute yourself and state your name for the record? Brenda Parker. Hi, Ms. Parker. Will you raise your right hand and promise that the testimony you give tonight will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Please state I do. I do. Okay. We will hear from the city first and then we'll come back to you for any additional comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Phil Benich presenting. 43 to 45 West Marcuson Avenue is located on the south side of West Markson Avenue, approximately 300 feet west of South High Street, served by the Columbus South Side Area Commission. It's zoned apartment residential. The site, which is located near the end of a dead end street, is currently undeveloped. Surrounding uses include four unit apartments to the west and south, vacant land to the north, and two unit dwellings to the north and east. The applicant proposes to construct a two unit dwelling and a detached garage along the alley. The proposed dwelling does not feature front porch and the two car garage will feature pull through parking. Variances are to reduce the minimum lot size from 7,200 square feet to 5,360 square feet to reduce maximum side yard required to reduce the minimum side yard from five feet to three feet and to increase the garage height from 15 feet to 20 feet, one inch. The Southside plan and Columbus citywide planning policies recommend that the design and character of new housing be compatible with adjacent nearby housing with respect to height, width, and setback, and that new residential garages be located behind the house if the site may be accessed by an alley. Furthermore, the plans recommend usable front porches at least eight feet deep, as well as open space. As such, planning staff supports the proposal, but encourages that a usable front porch be added to the front elevation. No comments from traffic, and mm -hmm. the Southside Area Commission has recommended approval of this request. City departments recommend approval. The proposed site plan and elevations are consistent with the area plan in C2P2 design guidelines, which recommend new housing be compatible with adjacent nearby housing and the garages be located along the alley. We recommend the condition that the applicant commit to the stamped site plan and building elevation, even though they've not uh, proposed the front porch. Madam Chair. Okay, first off, Ms. Parker, do you agree with the condition um, imposed by the city around the stamped site plan? I'm not sure I understand what that requirement is. So what happens is we like to have a final version of the site plan in the file. And so we usually stamp it that this is the final one as of this date so that okay. we will adhere to what's shown here in these renderings. Okay. Do you agree with that condition? Yes. Okay. Do you have anything to add to describe um, the variances requested here? So 
So a lot of the variance requests have to do with the narrowness of the lot. Um, the entire street is made up of duplexes or multifamily housing. Um, and in order to get two units side by side, um, we're requesting that we stretch to three feet from the property line instead of the five feet so that we can at least get 12 feet in an interior dimension. Um, and then with the duplex, you know, the lot size is a little bit too small to support that, but all the other um, buildings on the block are duplexes or multifamily. Um, we are asking for an increase in garage height just so that the pitch of the gable on the garage can match the pitch of the house. And um, due to the narrowness of the um, the interior space, um, it is kind of a long building. And so we're asking for um, to increase the lot coverage so that we can get the program incorporated into the footprint of the building. Okay. Do we have any questions, board members? I have a question for Jamie. So this is another example of where your surface parking isn't counted against, even though it's impervious and no grass grows, et cetera. Well, uh, all parking, whether it's surface or in a garage, counts against the rear yard. Uh, parking take up 45% of the minimum 25% rear yard. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, Parking can take up 45% of the required rear yard. Uh, every lot is required to provide 25% of rear yard. And Phil, if you can go back to the site plan, I think they have well more than 25%. I mean, the parking, when you consider the surface parking in the garage, is more than 50% of the backyard. Right. It's like 75% I mean, of the backyard. Well, the backyard starts at the back of the dwelling. Everything behind right. that is rear yard. I'm looking so at surface, the picture. Right. And surface parking does not count against that. Only the garage does. And a garage can take up 45% of that entire rear yard, which it looks like it's taken up maybe 40%. Right. I thought you just said that the parking, even the surface parking, would be counted against them. And no, I'm sorry. Can... I meant to say surface parking does not. Okay. Yeah, still, that's kind of bizarre to me, but we'll keep moving. <laughs> Okay. Do we have any questions for the applicant? Is there anybody here tonight that wishes to speak about this application? Please unmute yourself. Okay, I hear none. Are we ready to call the question? I'll call the question. Question has been called. Please call the Mr. Will Daly? Yes. Mr. DeMora? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Maleka? Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey? Yes, the bonus is, is granted and this site plan will be stamped um, in the record. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, case number three on our agenda, 1444 Joyce Avenue. Is the applicant here? Please unmute yourself and state your name for the record. Hi, Ms. Palmer, it's Laura Komack. I am here on behalf of Smart Truck Express LLC. Okay, please raise your right hand. Hold on, I got one, I got one person with me. Do you wanna do them oh. at the same time or separate? Let's do it at the same time. Okay, cool. Uh, Bashir, I see you there. Can you unmute and give me a... Uh... Yeah, state your name for the record, Mr. Muhammad, I think. Correct. Here he comes. Here we go. Take yourself off of mute. Oh, where'd he go? <laughs> okay. Okay. How about now? There he is. Uh, hello? Okay. Yes. Uh, guys, State your I name. Uh, Bashir Mohammed. 
uh, owner of Smart Truck Express. Okay, I'm going to swear you and Mrs. and Mrs. Comac in together. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you give tonight with the truth, nothing but the truth? Please state, I do. I do. I do. Perfect. Thank oh, you. I have somebody else swearing in. Mr. Fisher, I believe that is. Ma'am. Are you speaking on this case as well? And I represent the uh, my client, uh, Smart Truck Express, as well. Okay. Can you just state your name for the record? Eric Fisher. Okay. Thank you. Got you. Okay. We'll hear from the city first, and then we'll come back to the applicant. Okay. Uh, 1444 Joyce Avenue is located at the northeast corner of Joyce Avenue and Windsor Avenue. Uh, the site does take two par or three parcels and is located within the North Central Area Commission. Uh, the site is undeveloped currently. To the west is a recycling operation. To the north and south are residential dwellings. And to the east uh, is a vacant residentially zoned or vacant residentially zoned lots. The applicant proposes a truck storage lot up to 20 feet from any lot line off the site and requests variances to allow gravel maneuvering area. Actually, they're not requesting that anymore. It's not required. Uh, setback variances and to not provide landscaping. Uh, the North Central Plan recommends that landscape buffers be put in place between manufacturing and residential areas and that street trees be planted along street frontages. Planning would consider support if street trees were planted along Joyce Avenue and Windsor Avenue. Um, additional landscaping features were implemented throughout the rest of the site to create a buffer between manufacturing and residential uses. So, Phil, I'm not sure if you can go to the next slide. or I've, I've got a better slide I'll show that does sh show the uh, added landscaping. Uh, the Division of Traffic Management can support this application with a typical, typical condition that the portion of the parking area within 50 feet of the right-of-way is paved with an approved hard surface. And I did, uh, as of the writing of the report, no recommendation was received, but I have since re received a recommendation of approval from the North Central Area Commission. Uh, staff can recommend approval as the application, applicant has committed to the following conditions on the attached site plan. Number one, that uh, street trees were planted along Joyce Avenue and Windsor Avenue um, frontages. The portion of the parking area within 50 feet of the right-of-way will be paved with an approved hard surface, and the site plan will be stamped to reflect an increased uh, landscaping. So if you don't mind, I will go to the site plan that I have. All right, share content. So can everyone see that landscaping plan pretty well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so then, Jamie, they're not asking for the variance to um, not provide shrubbery. Um. Well, just a second. I'm gonna go back up to. If they are providing, they're just not providing ground uh, cover. Uh, it, that's that's a unique code section that requires it throughout the site. They're displacing the shrubbery with landscaping. If that makes sense. I'm sorry. They're what? They're displacing that with uh, landscaping. So one more, isn't, go back to the isn't shrubbery landscaping? Well, but let me, I'll go to that code section that cites exactly what that what it asked for. Oops. One second. Okay, so in in section thirty three six seven fifteen, uh, that portion of the lot or parcel budding street line to a total of that's a fifty feet um, shall be planted with suitable ground cover. So correct, they're not covering that whole area of ground cover, but rather they're uh, buffering the site with like trees, basically. So there is a difference. Okay. 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 So is this this variance is still valid? The variance yes. request is still accurate. Yes, because this okay. is, I guess, um, you know, it'd be more ground cover than it is just trees, which we feel trees are a better buffer than ground cover. Okay, gotcha. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off. Go ahead. 
Uh, no, it's fine. I think I, I ended my presentation with uh, the three conditions, and uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you and the applicant. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the three conditions. Okay, the first one is that street trees will, will be planted along the Joyce and Windsor Avenue frontages, and additional landscaping features will be implemented throughout the rest of the site to create a buffer. Uh, basically, the stamp the site plan showing where the landscaping has been added. Uh, the portion of the parking area within 50 feet of the right-of-way will be paved with a fruit hard, hard surface. That is a typical recommendation from Division of Traffic Management. Uh, so that trucks aren't dragging gravel out into the city right away. And finally, the site plan will be stamped to reflect the landscaping. Okay. Okay, so I'm not sure who's going to speak on this. Is that Ms. Comac? Okay. Um, yes, are, you, are you in agreement with the three conditions imposed by the city? Yes, we are. Yes. I just, I want to clarify a couple, just the quick points for you. And while I'm talking, either Phil or Jamie want to give me the rights to share real quick. Um, so the first condition is street trees. Just for clarification, one of the CIP projects done by the city already installed them on Joyce. So we just have to do Windsor. Um, the landscaping, yes. And that additional consideration is a mound, which I'm going to show you in a moment. And then the 50 foot right of way, we agree to that. But the clarification is it's not... Um, I don't want you to visualize it as the entire frontage. Um, in speaking with Dan and the Danettes was, it's the driveway. So 50 feet of the driveway where we will um, come through is to be paved with the acceptable surface so that you don't drive them out. But there's one of the things that we did on this pro project was put um, certain folks, including Jamie and Dana through a wee, for a few paces about the difference between parking and storage and things like that. So. I just wanted to be really clear that when we use the word parking, it's not just a 50 foot paved, it's just the apron and then the drive before the trucks get there to the exit. It's not actually, it doesn't mean the whole 50 feet is paved. Does that make sense? So what's 50 feet? The pavement, um, as soon as I get, oh yeah, I was gonna do that too. If you, I just don't have the ability to share. There you go, just go up to share. No, it, it's not, um, it's not highlighted. It's not like, okay. how do I do that? Just uh, the, go up and hit the share button on the top, very top, and then hit share content. Um, my button is in the middle at the bottom. It says- Yeah, mine's at the bottom too. Okay, that one's fine. You can use that one. It's not, it's not lit up. Whichever screen you want to share, it should just let you share. Okay, it's, um, it's not lit up. If you hover your mouse over it, will it light up? Nope. That's what I mean. Like it's not, um, it's not linking up. All right. Well, Phil, can you just go to the PowerPoint? So, um, picture right. It, it's not a. It's not fifty feet along the entire frontage. It's the fifty feet. Yes. Okay. So see, like the access drive, um, where I have the word access drive. That's where our access off of Joyce is going to be. And so. Um, it's, it's the apron, right? So the drive into the site and then for 50 feet past the right of way, we will have a concrete drive. So it's 50 feet back. Correct. But okay. I didn't want you to think it's 50 feet wide along the whole frontage. Now, to be honest, I, I, not to be honest, to be clear, the fact is we've got a few conditions that I'm going to run through in the presentation, which Damn it, I don't know how you're gonna be able to see that. Okay, I'll figure it out. Okay. Um, but- Laura, if you wanna email me anything, I can share it. I'm not sure why okay. you can't, but I can. Okay, um, I will do that real quick. So the answer is, uh, I'll start in just by telling you a couple things. Um, the reason that I want to walk through briefly the proposal and to show you, make you comfortable with a couple of these details is, you know, we have worked this project and the presentation tonight and the recommendation from North Central would not be possible um, without the really hard work from uh, with and uh, the neighbors. So Mr. McLean took me around and was able to show me a couple things that are happening in the neighborhood. Um, so did neighbor B. Tolber. So Ms. Tolber had me out there a couple times and showed me some of the um, things that are happening and a few of the sight lines that are most important to them in the neighborhood. And so um, I want to keep just briefly um, the transparency of the communication. And because 
the last hearing that I had with North Central was right after the staff report came out. I want to make sure I'm very clear with you guys um, because I've put all of the commitments in writing, right? This is one of the parts of town where people historically don't follow up. There's a pile of asphalt across the street. I get it that it happens, but when it happens over and over for years and years in a particular neighborhood, right? Um, I, they are justifiably skeptical of folks who come in and try to do these projects. So obviously transparency is many things in writing. I see Mr. Lemons is on the call tonight. He's a zoning chairperson. So I just, I want to make sure everybody um, understands we're being really clear. So a couple things, working through with Jamie and uh, staff, um, and I'm hitting send to you on this PDF here, Jamie, um, working through them, we did eliminate a lot of the variances that were in the um, statement of hardship originally. And I got to tell you, the reason we do that is because I, I need to make sure that everybody is talking English to one another in these, you know, when I get to the next stage of development, I need Dana Hit for zone and clearance to talk the same language as Jamie when we get there. So our guys actually went through zoning clearance, got a big list of things. And so I put that whole list in there when we started. Then by working through staff, we eliminated it. So I just want everybody to know where we came from on that. And Jamie, let me know when you get that. Um, all right. I don't know. It's it's a big file. Shit. All right. Okay. So let me just walk through verbally a couple things for you. If you guys want to put up the site plan, I'd appreciate that. You know, all right, we're going to make it work. All right. So... Three step process. The site Excuse is already. Me, Jamie, did you want to share your site plan or the one in the PowerPoint? I'll share my. I'll share the more up to date one. Okay. Thanks, Bill. I don't know why it's not lighting up. It wants me to go to my system. I'm not doing that. Okay. Okay. I just don't want to lose you guys. All right. This is great. Let's leave it right here. So three step process. The project. The site's already zoned M. Okay. So it's allowed, but the significant setbacks reduce the size of the lot for use to less than 50. So what we did, um, because, uh, so smart trucking, small business, locally owned, 40 employees, 40 extra contractors, um, they are doing trucking work for lots of folks locally and a couple national folks. They needed to consolidate their sites. So since it's already zoned M, we've put in for zoning clearance to use a little bit of it. While the BZA, that's step two is pending, to use more of the site. So what you're looking at right here is the site plan that we have shared with the North Central folks. There's, um, in working with Ms. B, she wanted a wall. And I said, you don't want a wall because uh, you don't want to look like the side of a freeway and all that. What they allowed us to do is to put in an eight foot high mound. It'll create a 50 foot buffer. That's right above where you see is the pink strip. So it's with trees and an eight foot grass mound, just so that it looked more natural and it didn't look institutional or anything. But their point, when, when we met on site a couple of times and they talked about it, we were able to do that. Where you see the existing trees just to the right of there, there's a green strip underneath there. We own that. And so we are going to, in this step two, retain those trees. It's very significant. Um, we also own the lots just to the east of that or to the right of that. And that's going to be part of phase three that I'll tell you about in just a second. So commitment number one is the eight foot mound. If you do an eight foot mound properly, it's 50 feet wide with deciduous and evergreen trees so that you shouldn't see the trucks. The pink area is the area that's adjacent to residentially zoned property where we've agreed to park the longer term to put the trucks and trailers that are going to be there longer term. So they move less for the neighbors. Um, Okay, so phase three, the um, Bashir, uh, Mr. Muhammad, who you see on the call here, he has been acquiring a variety of other lots. And so he owns what's off the screen in the northwest corner in the upper left-hand side. He owns uh, the bulk of things that are to the east, those platted lots and down at the corner. And then he also owns what's off to the right farther. It's not shown on this plan. Those are zoned R, so we need to come back with a full-blown rezoning, but the goal is to let this gentleman consolidate his other parcels around town and begin using this until he develops his office building and those kinds of things and plans for that. So Ms. Palmer, coming back to the 50 foot thing, we are gonna pave this. And one of the commitments that we made to the neighborhood is that we will start our work by April 15th and we will be done with the mound. And he agreed to pave it, even though it's not required, but agreed to pave it 
by July 30th. So those are the things I just wanted to let you know because it's um, really important that we just make sure that we say these things on the record. Jamie has a list of them that I would like you, if you wouldn't mind, please to incorporate into the board order. Um, and those are the eight foot mound, um, the paving done by July 30th, longer term uh, items to be stored in that pink area on the site plan. Um, we're gonna retain the trees for phase two. And then before we can do anything else, we'd come back for a full zoning. We're gonna reduce the lights down to the 18 feet um, AEP has some really high poles there. We're going to ask them to put the fixtures down a wee bit lower. And then um, we're also committed to using Joyce Avenue until we come back with phase three for Windsor. It's, it's a really interesting area. You know, we met there with the zone police officer. Um, I asked the assistant prosecutor to come down because there's a variety of things, there's illegal dumping and all that. So we just wanted to make sure that we proceeded in an orderly fashion in the same order that we told the neighbors. So I appreciate your indulgence. I just want to make sure I got that on the record and um, again, try to be as transparent as we can. Okay. Um, we don't, we don't um, monitor, this sounds like a good faith agreement that you have with the community, which we don't, um, we don't monitor those. And so I appreciate you sharing them with us, but we don't enforce those. Um, but you stated it here. Everybody sees that you're committed to it, and I think that's appreciated. Madam Chair, let me let me ask you: Would that, you know, kind of eight foot mound be counted or qualified as screening? Yes, absolutely. It's a solid mound of earth. It's going to be eight foot high. It'll be grassed and seeded, and then well, people be on. I say that, Lord, because we do have, or Miss Comex, sorry, uh, because we do have um, jurisdiction over screening. At least I believe we do, Jamie. Yeah, but they, but that's not required. Like they're not the variances that they're they're seeking have nothing to do with screening. That's that's condition. Condition. Add that as a condition. Number two, it's condition number two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. This the the screen the condition. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's okay. And I wasn't sure if you would put them into the board order, um, but if not, that's okay. It's part of our packet, and um, you know, it's it's all right. Yeah. Um, is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Okay, board members, do we have any other questions? Oh, can I clarify one quick thing? We also sure. agreed on the east it was after jamie issued the uh, staff report we had a meeting with north central and it was the eastern boundary it's not 10 feet we agreed to 25 feet so between the 25 feet plus our 20 reserve the right of way in our lots it's effectively you know 50 plus feet from any uh, other residentially zoned property so we made that 25 and uh jamie's got that too can't show it sorry okay are we ready to call the question with the conditions, um, the the screening, the um, paving, and the uh, stamp site plan? Is that right, Jamie? Those are the three. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Are we ready to call the question? I'll call the question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Demora. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Mr. Maleka? Yes. Mr. Waldelli? Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey? Yes. Variance is granted. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. You too. Same back. Okay. Case number four, 4815 East oh. Main Street. Will the applicant oh. take yourself off a of mute and state your name for the record? Jeffrey L. Brown, attorney for the applicant. You promised that the testimony you get tonight the truth, nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is case BZA 20-079-4815 East Main Street. It is located on the south side of East Main Street, approximately 504 feet west of Country Club Road. This is an area that's served by the Mid-East Area Commission. 
and the Mideast Area Commission recommends approval of the special permit and variance request. Um, this is a proposal uh, for two things, uh, to modify the parking lot standards to allow existing conditions to essentially remain the same and to allow a portable food vendor to be established. The uh, portable food vendor um, has been um, coming in and out of the site on a daily basis for an extended period of time. And uh, what they're asking for is to simply be able to leave the uh, vehicle there at all times instead. <clears throat> Um, the other, because of this request for the special permit, it brought about the requests for uh, vision clearance triangle at the um, uh, curb cut that is furthest to the west on the site, which you would see identified about in the middle of the screen toward Main Street on the right-hand side of the site plan there. And then uh, there's a reduction in the parking setback line from 10 feet to 4 feet, which is uh, basically an existing condition. It's been that way since uh, the building was constructed in 1967. So um, uh, the division of uh, traffic management states that uh, they would like to have a right-of-way dedication, which is pretty typical in a situation like this, uh, to, uh, from 50 feet to the center line of East Main Street. And um, they suggested that the parking configuration might need to be changed as long, but they, they did not object to what it was as long as no other city department had a concern with it. No other city department had a concern with it, so um, um, we can be supportive of that. Um, the Division of Planning um, was not in favor of uh, the curb cut that I just described to you. and. Um, so therefore, the city staff is uh, recommending disapproval of the variances requested um, for the parking lot that involve the parking lot, but we are uh, able to support the portable building request and with a condition that we would like for you to consider, please. Um, and that condition is, should the portable building uh, ever remain in place and become unused for a period of more, not more than two a uh, two month continuous period. It shall be removed from the site and require a new special permit to be reestablished if they want to have it back. Thank you very much. Okay, Kate. Before we go, um, the three existing parking spaces that are in the clear vision triangle, can you point those out to us on this map? Well, there, there are two parking spaces, I believe, that are affected by the vision clearance, and that, was, that is, uh, would be indicated by the, where the curb cut is that's in the center toward Main Street. up. Uh, up above there uh, where the screening is. All right, so there's one space right there to the south of that curb cut, and there's another space to the north of the curb cut that's affected uh, as the vision clearance problem. And the vision clearance is caused by the shrubbery that I see on this site plan? No, it's caused, well, no, the shrubbery that's there is requested and asked for by the planning division, that, <clears throat> that has nothing to do with it because, um, Phil, if you could show a ground shot of the frontage there where that um, flag thing was, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So the shrubberies go in there where that open sign is. Okay. And, and, and so the parking space is, the, the parking space 
one of the parking spaces that's affected is the parking space just on this side of that silver car that's parked there. Okay, so it has nothing to do with with um, where the shrubs are proposed. Okay, I, I don't think I'm clear on this point. Are others on the board clear on this point? No, I'm not. They're going to need to explain it. Yeah, I, Mad, Madam Chairman, may, may I just offer some information? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Brown. Um, what the Clear Vision Triangle is, the, the city code has, depending on whether it's a driveway going into a private property or onto a public street, there is a triangle that they draw on the pavement. And that is supposed to be free of any uh, obstructions, so you can see coming in and out. Mm -hmm. And so in this instance, as you show there, they do a triangle and we had three spaces that would be affected by that if there was a car there. Uh, we talked to the traffic people and showed them what was going on with that. And they don't have a problem with approving that variance should you do it. They don't have an issue uh, with that on this site plan. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Brown, where's the truck going? I'm sorry? Where's the food truck going? Oh, if, if we could go back to the site plan. <clears throat> the site, the, the food truck is that is on the bottom of this drawing. It's the little rectangle that you see up right there. So it's set back and out of, out of the way of any travel or maneuvering. Okay. If you like, I can do my presentation now. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Brown, sorry. Um, for those of you who are old enough to remember, this is an old Sun TV appliance store. Okay. Uh, my client is a tenant in that building, and as staff pointed out, we are just correcting some existing conditions out there. When planning looked at the development, they asked for the landscaping and the shrubbery along Main Street, which we have agreed to do. Uh, they asked us to eliminate a curb cut, which we didn't understand because one, it's not a traffic issue. Traffic has no problem with that curb cut. And two, you know, we're not doing a raise and rebuild. So uh, we could not comply with that one issue because one, traffic doesn't see a need for that removal. Uh, but we did the other things that the planning department asked us to do. Uh, my client has a friend who has a food truck. And what we'd like to do is not go through the hassle or the technicality of taking it off the property every night and bringing it back in the morning. So when we presented this to the area commission, they approved both the special permit and the variances provided that we would do the, the landscaping and we've agreed to do that. And we would agree to the, the, the condition that Mr. Rice put in the staff report about the 60 day uh, non-use of the, the food uh, okay. Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Board members, are we clear about what we're putting on? Yeah, let me ask uh, some questions for Mr. Brown. Um, so if we look at the front of the building, it's a thrift store for kids that are exposed to cancer. What type of of you know volume and and people running around in that parking lot that are kids um, do we have to worry about? Well, I think when you look at that, we have head in parking right in front of the store, and I think that's kind of representative of a typical day when I've been there. The parking lot has not been full, so you would have people in their cars that would park in front of the building, walk in the store, and walk make their purchases and walk back out. So this this is a good diagram. For, so the food truck is going to be basically where that white car is, essentially. Is that correct? No, sir. The food truck is to the left and behind where that pole is on the left side. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I got that. So it, it is it is way out of the way of the parking and the entrance, and it's back along by the building on the other side, away from the building. No, that's my apology. I got that back. Yep. 
I understand. I'm good, Madam Chair. Okay. Bill, were you, did you have questions? No, he just okay. answered mine about where the, showing me where the food truck was okay. actually in the parking lot. Thank you. Okay. Uh, question for clarity. Go ahead. Are, are we saying, or is staff saying, they recommend disapproval for the parking setback? We are recommending disapproval of the variance of the variances, anything that has to do with the parking lot because the planning division wasn't satisfied about the elimination of the western curb cut. Screw the planning division. So Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, everything I heard from you sounded like it was supportive from traffic management. Yes, sir, Mr. Jones. We've done everything that planning asked us to do except to remove the curb cut. And when I met with the traffic people, uh, they saw no reason to remove that curb cut. And I would understand if this was a raise and rebuild, you would consolidate. But given what we're doing with an existing building, uh, I just couldn't agree to remove a curb cut. The traffic says it's not a problem. And is Brandon here to speak on this at all? Yeah, I'm here. Do you want to speak on this for us for clarity? Um, if you have any questions, but yeah, we didn't have any um, need to remove any curb cuts. The, the request was from planning to remove the curb cuts. That's not typically you don't see that. Um, but I mean, we're not we're not going to be the ones to require that. So, so. You're, while it, it's typically in your purview but mm -hmm. to do something like that, planning on their own just randomly said that. And you clearly are saying that there's no issue with it. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Okay. Are we ready to call the question? I'll call the question. With the condition, let me just be clear. With yes, the with the condition, yes. About the, the, the 60 days. Okay. Please call the roll. Question's been called. Hey, Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Maleka? Yes. Mr. Weldally? Yes, because the kids need hot dogs and tacos, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Demora? Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey. Yes, variance and special permit granted. Good luck with the project. Thank you. If I could, um, I understand this is Dave Rice's last BZA meeting. That's true. Oh, I didn't know that. I just want right. to thank him for all the work that he's done and our relationship over the years. I've enjoyed that, and I am sorry to see that he will be gone. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Yes, uh, Eleanor, uh, you had to leave the meeting early last uh, last time, and I made the announcement at the end of the meeting. So, uh, okay. Why, you know. <laughs> but thank Thanks you very for... much, Jeff. It's it's been great working with you over the years. Thank you. Merry Christmas. See you <laughs> okay. Next case up is two forty two Thurman Avenue. 242 Thurman Avenue. If the applicant is here, please take yourself off of mute and state your name for the record. Uh, yes, this is Dave Perry. I'm uh, consulting on this application. The uh, property owner is also on the call, Mr. Alex Marsh. Hello, Mr. Marsh, are you uh, visible? Can you take yourself off of mute? Ah, All right, I'm here. Okay, I'll swear you both in at the same time. Please raise your right hand. You promise that the testimony you get tonight be the truth, nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do. I do. Okay. Uh, we'll hear from the city first, and then we'll come back to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You guys should have received uh, supplemental emails today with two letters in opposition to this variance proposal, and I believe uh, the applicants both stated for the opposing uh, neighbors both said that they would also attend this meeting. Um, 
So this is for BZA 20-094 at 242 Thurman Avenue, located on the south side of Thurman Avenue, approximately 68 feet east of Blackberry Alley. This property is zoned R2F residential district. The 0.14 acre site is developed with a single unit dwelling and detached garage. Surrounding uses are predominantly single unit dwellings, though so commercial establishments are located next door and nearby on Thurman Avenue, along with two and multi-unit dwellings. The applicant proposes to split the lot and construct an additional single unit dwelling along East Redbud Alley. Attached garages would be incorporated into each unit. Experiences are requested to reduce maneuvering, though an easement will allow more than is required. Lot width, lot area, and rear yard requirements for both parcels. Additionally, Variances are requested to conform the side yard of the existing dwelling and the front fronting requirement for the proposed dwelling on East Redbud Alley. Planning is supportive of the proposal. Columbus citywide planning policy states the design and character of infill development be appropriate and based on principal and nearby structures. The proposed lot split is supportable as staff knows the measure to reduce lot coverage with a ribbon driveway. Staff continues to encourage additional pavers to be included in the rear of the site, but would not condition approval on this addition. Additionally, staff is in support of the received elevations as they are consistent with C2P2 design guidelines. The Division of Traffic Management has no comments regarding the proposed site layout. The Columbus Southside Area Commission recommends approval of the request Staff two can recommend approval of the reduced development standards for the proposed single unit dwellings as the site design character and elevations of the development are consistent with C2P2 policy recommendations. And we would condition this on the stamp site plan uh, in your staff report packet. Okay, so in addition to the stamp site plan, I guess we would need maneuvering easements as well, right? Um, I believe they're already working on that. Okay. Okay, Mr. Perry, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. The project is as stated by staff proposal to split the existing parcel with a single family dwelling fronting Thurman Avenue to uh, create a parcel with the existing dwelling and build a new single family dwelling uh, accessed from Redbud Alley. Um, an easement will also be provided on the Red Butt Alley parcel for access to a parking area. There is no parking variance uh, proposed with this application as each dwelling will have the code required two parking spaces accessed from uh, the parcel on Red Butt Alley with a common maneuvering area. Um, in conjunction with the um, permits for the new dwelling, the lot split and the new dwelling, uh, we would provide easements for uh, the use of the driveway and the common maneuvering, ar maneuvering area, but the, the overall dimension of the maneuvering area exceeds code requirements. There have been uh, many, many splits such as this in the in the entire Midtown area and and also including in this commission area, the greater uh, uh, greater Southside Columbus commission area. And um, honestly, this is a this is a very positive sign for a neighborhood when um, there's a desire to split parcels and build new new single family dwellings uh, in the neighborhood. The area commission supported the project unanimously, um, and staff supports the uh, the application. Also, uh, we worked with staff on a couple items, and um, there there was some discussion of the application with the. Uh, Marion Village Civic Association. I suspect that's what the speakers are here for, but I'd uh, like to come back to that point, uh, uh, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody that here that wants to speak about this application? Okay. Do we have the do we have questions for the application from the board? Yes, this is Teresa Hutchings. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Um, I'm I'm calling in opposition of the application. Oh, okay. Can you um do you do you promise that the testimony you give tonight will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. 
Tony, did you get the name? Yes, my name is Teresa Hutchings, and I live at 1113 Blackberry Alley. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Could you please spell um, your name? Oh, she's asking you to spell sure. your name, please. The first name is Teresa, T-H-E-R-E-S-A. Hutchings, H-U-T-C-H-I-N-G. Thank you. Um, I'm calling in opposition of this, opposition of this um, proposal. Columbus, Ohio zoning code states no variance shall be granted unless the board finds that the applicant has demonstrated practical difficulties. Ma'am, ma'am, unreasonably, ma'am. Yes. Do so you have your computer on and your phone? Uh, no. I'm sorry. What? No. Okay. Um, Jamie, can, Jamie, can you mute everyone's phone? Because there's a there's a reverb coming. Can can you hear me now? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, that's much okay. better. Um, Columbus, Ohio zoning code states, no variance shall be granted unless the board finds that the applicant has demonstrated practical difficulties that are unreasonable deprive the applicant of the permitted use of the property. 242 Thurman Avenue is a single family residence typical of this neighborhood, has a house yard garage with housing fronting Thurman. Property is situated between two other properties in the middle of a block. This is not a corner lot. Alexander Marsh and Dave Perry purchased this property knowing it was a landlocked single family home. The property was built in 1914, and over the course of 106 years, the property has not, I mean, the property has had beneficial use without the listed variances. The property owner is causing the need for these variances. The current owner can make beneficial use of this property and receive a reasonable return in its current state without any variances. The property is currently being rented out as an Airbnb. The house and three garage stalls could be rented on a long-term basis. The owner could make the property his own permanent residence or sell the property. Property values have increased considerably due to the high demand for homes in this neighborhood. Looking to capitalize on an investment isn't demonstration of a practical difficulty. The property owner is causing the need for the variances and threatening the interest of nearby properties. Splitting the lot, tearing down a three-car garage, constructing three additional structures, a single family dwelling, two separate two-car garages, pouring a concrete driveway, a parking pad between the garages, requires substantial variances. 251 East Deschler Avenue is the only new construction in the surrounding area. To be in line with the nature of the neighborhood, a single-family dwelling that fronted Red Bud Alley was torn down. A new single-family dwelling was constructed fronting East Deschler and a new garage constructed at the rear of the property on Red Bud Alley. The property was reoriented to mirror the surrounding homes and be consistent with the flow and nature of the neighborhood. This property is exactly opposite of the proposed development at 242 Thurman. Eliminating green space, the rear and side yards, and jamming four structures onto a lot proposed for a single family home creates density and quality of life issues for the adjoining property. These variances threaten the interest of nearby property owners. I cannot see how granting these variances carries out the intent and purpose of the zoning code. Items to note, the residents of Marion Village unanimously voted against the requested variances presented in this application. Yes, the Southside Area Commission overruled the interest and desires of the neighbors and neighborhoods stating that an Airbnb is not a crime. These fees, there is also a question about feasibility of a car, let alone multiple cars properly maneuvering the drive, shared parking pad, and garages of this proposed, proposed development in question. This is not in line and mirrored with the flow and look of the nature of this street or the couple of blocks surrounding it. Thank you. I have a question for you, ma'am. Yes. You've mentioned threatening uh, two times. What is the threat to the community? Well, now there's no green space. And also, if we do approve of this, you're now setting up a standard that allows everybody on the block to do it, which 
which clearly redefines the look and nature of the street and the neighborhood. Okay. What the threat to the, so the adjacent the neighbors. Threat. Pardon me? I'm still not hearing a threat to the community. Are you saying that because it's a it's it's not a single family dwelling that that's that's the difference between this and other other lots? The other lots in the neighborhood along the street and the blocks around it are either single family or they're doubles that are side by side. They're not stacking in a lot. They're not paving the whole lot. They're not trying to to jam as much into a piece of property as possible to make a dime. So maybe I missed something. It's I thought also, this. No, I thought this was a double. No, it's already. No, wow. it's not a double. This is okay. a single family home. Home in the front, big yard, and a three car garage in back. So do you just have like the other one. To add about the threat, uh, just so I'm clear, you don't have any more to add, then, right? Well, um, it's already a high trafficked area because of the development at Thurman and Jaeger. So we already have a lot of high traffic. And I talk about visibility and triangle issues with cars coming in out of that, that lot would be almost impossible. So I don't know how you couldn't pull out of that lot without hitting another car that could be passing by. And this project impacts that? Impacts which? You, I, I'm, I'm trying to get to what the threat is, and I'm not really hearing that from you yet for this project that they're proposing. I, I understand that you're well, I don't have to, Here's the thing. I don't have to prove threat. The applicants have to prove that there is an issue, that this property cannot be used in its, its, its permissible state. To me, yes. you just said threat twice. So you have to prove to me that's that common. Oh, like you don't have anything. So that's fine. I don't have to prove. I don't have to prove threat. You have to prove that the values of these homes around here are not going to devaluate. Ma'am, I think you, you have to you have to explain your comments to us so we understand. We don't understand. We're trying to so get clarification. A, We're trying to get clarification of what you mean. Okay, so this is a historical neighborhood. And you have, and it's a neighborhood. People come here for a certain reason. They, it's close to the to downtown, but it still is a community with houses and yards and garages. Now, all of a sudden, if you take the whole nature of the community and you start taking away the yards and you pour just concrete and you double plotting, you put two structures on every one of them, it creates density issues. It creates quality of life issues for the neighbors. But we but we have approved but we have approved instances like this where the homeowner is upgrading, right? With a larger footprint, a larger footprint of the garage, a larger footprint of the house. We have approved those in the past and we're trying to understand what's wrong with that improving. Um, putting an addition on a home is in line with, I think, natural development. But trying to stack multiple homes on one property just to make a dime isn't natural. Okay. So your problem is the multiple homes, not the bigger footprint. I have a problem with the bigger footprint, no green space. You're setting the standard. Okay. I know that I know that variances and codes are in place for a reason. Okay. And we're throwing uh, that all out the door because somebody wants to capitalize on their investment. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. I believe uh, Rita Hillsheimer would you like to speak on this issue. Take yourself off of mute, ma'am. Okay, we we still can't hear you. Is there anybody else that wants to speak on this issue? Jamie, do you want to unmute her? Frida. There we go. 
Miss Hillsheimer. Miss Hillsheimer. While we're getting her set up, is there anybody else here who would like to speak on this application? I'm not sure if you guys read her letter that I sent you. She said objective. she says she's on the phone. Um, we can't hear you. Can you unmute? Oh, uh, try the call in users 12 and 8, I guess. Um, this is Teresa. She'll have to star six. Can you hear me now? Mute. She's probably. There yes, we, we can hear you. Thank you. Oh, okay. my goodness. Okay. Please, please state your name for the record. Rita Hilsheimer, okay. R-I-T-A-H-I-L-S-H-E-I-M-E-R. -E -E okay, and you promised that the testimony you get tonight with the truth. Please say that I do. I do. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I um, have um, issues with the proposed application for multiple reasons. I do live directly west of the 242 Thurman Avenue, and you could see my home in the prior picture with the gate in front of it at 241 East Redbud Alley. Um, the um, first reason I would have issue would be that um, it changes my, my view, it changes the sun exposure, which I have very little of as it is, but it also changes my privacy. People would be able to look right inside my yard and window, which I've lived here for 38 years. I don't want that. It's not something that should be approved because it doesn't fit the zoning that is on the books currently, the rules. Um, the um, space is not sufficient for an additional home and two garages because of the ingress and egress, um, it's very difficult for me to get into my own driveway, and especially during the winters. I don't know if you're aware, but there is no snow plows during, down the alleys. Um, they never do, ever. And so what we end up with are deep ruts from the garbage trucks that go through in the winter and then they freeze over and you have to get yourself out of your driveways and over those ruts. And with the minimal space that's already there with the telephone poles, the garbage receptacles, and then the ice and snow, I've slid into the, the telephone poles, the dumpsters, and I've had cars going up and down the alley, slide into my own home, adding another um, home and more vehicles going in and out that wouldn't be able to see before they even tried to get out of the space because they're going to have um, a garage on one side and a house that they're going to put up on the other so they'd have no clearance to be able to see coming out onto the alley is going to create more issues with sliding and trying to get in and out when it's icy. Plus it would have enough problems getting in and out during other months of the year. Um, the use of the current home on 242 Redbud Alley is an Airbnb. That's something that I don't appreciate living next door to. I didn't move in. I moved in to my home with a family in a single residence next door. Right now it's a business. It's a weekly, daily rental with different people at all times coming and going. You never know who belongs or who doesn't belong. There have been problems with some of them, such as the 4th of July where they were setting off fireworks, not firecrackers, but huge fireworks and almost started a garage on fire. Um, that's problematic because there's nothing to say that they're not going to put another one 
right next door to me on top of the one that already is there and create two businesses. So I, I really think that once we allow this, we can't undo it. It's going to be there. And then I, I'm going to have another battle with a business next door. Um, a long-term rental is different, but an Airbnb is not something I think anyone wants in their next-door neighbor. Um, the new plumbing and sewage and paving can create issues with um, the flows of the water and the next-door neighbors. That's an issue already here in the village that we have, and every time they build a new home in the area, it does create more issues when you're taking out ground space and putting in paved area where there wasn't before. So that's an issue for my um, list as well. And then I just don't understand why we would go against all of these variances in zoning records and laws to create something that, to me, creates more problems for the neighborhood than it enhances the neighborhood. Okay. So that's that's my issues. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Demore, do you have something? Yeah. Um either the the lady that just spoke or the one before, they said something about the Marion Villains Society or or, or things voting unanimously against it. Are, are they members of Marion Village or is there I mean, when was it heard and what was the vote? I just want some more details on that, please. This is Rita Hilsheimer. I'm not, I don't know if I said anything about that, but I was, I am a member, I'm a Marion Village resident, and I attended that meeting, and it was voted against for each and every variance in entirety. And city staff, you don't have that? I mean, I mean, the South Side Area Commission encompasses the entire South Side, whereas Marion Village um, Society is actually the neighbors of the of the area. So, uh, I mean, do we have any report from them? Have they sent? Did they send anything to the city? I don't know if they sent um, their report from the meetings. I'm not an actual member. I just am a um, resident in Marion Village, and I did attend the meeting. Mr. Okay. Moore. We only require a recommendation form from the area commission. The civics can provide them to us if they want. Um, I did not receive one from the civic. Sometimes you'll see it. We'll give but if they want us to. But in this case, I did not receive anything from Marion Village. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hilsheimer. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else? that has that likes to speak on this issue okay mr perry we'll turn it over to you to take us through the duncan factors and show us the hardship um very good um, I, i'd like to address a number of those points and i'd like uh, alex marsh to address a couple of them also okay um okay so um the first speaker, Teresa Hutchins at uh, 1113 Blackberry Alley. That's um, uh, looks like about three or four properties to the west. Uh, her house is on a split lot. Uh, it is not on a full lot. It may have been split a long time ago, but it's on a split lot. The adjacent, the adjacent owner, uh, uh, Rita Hillsheimer, 241 Redbud Alley. Her house is on a split lot. This was discussed at uh, the Marion Village meeting, and she made the point that it was split a long time ago or or uh, a long, long time ago, but regardless, it's on a split lot. It is a comparable lot to what is proposed here. The, um, okay, so we have, um, let's see, let's talk about the traffic issues, safety of access, uh, Mr. Marsh's uh, and, and uh, for the record, members of the board, I think you know this, but I am in, in no way, shape, or form involved with the ownership of this property, as was referred to by um, Teresa Hutchins. But um, Mr. Marsh's property has a three-car garage at the rear of, uh, rear of the property, and it is uh, on the property line. And um, what, is, what is happening with the placement of this house? Mr. Perry, 
I'm sorry to interrupt, Jamie. Can we put up the the schematic just so we can see kind of what oh. is happening as as Mr. Perry's talking? Sure. Okay. Um, actually, staff, do you have uh, aerial photography? Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right, Mr. Marsh's property is outlined. Um, Rita Hilsheimer's property is abutting to the left, 241 Redwood. The What's happening with the proposed placement of this house, the new house, is uh, a 10 foot setback. So the uh, the site the site distance is actually being improved for uh, the driveway on the traffic issues. The um, uh, I, I'm just I'm just not following the devalue the neighborhood comments. This is a this house that is proposed to be built uh, will be in the five hundred thousand dollars area. Um, there is a dwelling unit. Um, the uh, Rita Hilsheimer's parcel is a comparable size parcel. There is a dwelling unit in the building to the right on the screen. It is not on a split lot, but there is a dwelling unit in that building. And on the same Marion Village meeting that this application was heard, a, a different proposal for a dwelling unit in a rear building was heard and was unanimously supported. Um, there wasn't uh, the question of the Airbnb. And I, I, I want to come back to that. Uh, as far as people knowing about the Marion Village uh, vote, uh, absolutely they knew about it. The Mar Marion Village forwarded their recommendation to the Area Commission, and it was read, it was discussed and read into the record. The Commission elected to vote for approval of this, uh, regardless, um, for for a number of reasons, but. Um, the the discussion at Marion Village, which I was on that meeting, was 100% about Airbnb, and Airbnb isn't about zoning, uh, zoning or variances. So let's um, let's talk. Uh, let's ask. Uh, let's see. Two other things. I, two things I'd like Mr. Marsh to address. When 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 I when I first had the first meeting with on this project with Marion Village, um, I didn't know about. Any of the issues with um, Ms. Hilsheimer or the Airbnb, and I asked Mr. Marsh immediately that night. Contact Rita Hilsheimer, and I want I want you to hear his testimony. But but he made multiple 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 attempts to contact her with no response. We were I I was very concerned about that connection being made immediately following Marion Village. And uh, there has been no response from her until tonight. She did not attend the Maryville or the the area commission meeting, and has not been um, apparent on this application until tonight. Uh, the second item is the, the Airbnb. I can tell you the plan of the the owner is to split the split the parcel as requested, uh, build the house, and then sell sell both of them. So. Um, Chair, if we can switch to uh, Mr. Marsh, uh, can he address uh, the um, Airbnb and also his multiple attempts to contact Rita Hilsheimer? Yeah, and while he's doing that, Mr. Perry, I do want you to go through the Duncan factors so you'll have some time to to gather your 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 checklist on that issue. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Marsh. I can't. He, I think you're on. Perfect. Okay. okay. I just wanted to thank everyone for their time today and allowing me to speak. Um, we engaged Dave uh, maybe six months ago about looking at this after driving down Redbud Alley and seeing other houses at the uh, front of the alley, uh, including the one to uh, the west of us, uh, Rita's house. Uh, and then after uh, the Marion Village uh, meeting, which I was not able to attend, but Dave attended, uh, we had heard pushback for the first time from the neighbors about Airbnb use. Uh, and so we actually went to our house and dropped off a letter, uh, called her multiple times and said, you know, we'd like to discuss this. Uh, I even gave her my property manager's contact information so uh, he could discuss it directly. And he's actually on here as well if there's specific questions that need to be addressed. 
Um, and then we also reach out to the neighbor directly behind, the neighbor to the east. Uh, the neighbor directly behind is in support of the project, uh, and the neighbor to the east is in support of the project as well. Um, if we need to provide letters um, in, in support of it, we can. Uh, but, you know, I think our, our thought was that, you know, other uh, properties along the alley had been split. Uh, and so we're just kind of trying to be treated like everyone else has been. Okay. So let me just state this um, on the record. Airbnb is not illegal. Um, this board does not have the authority to dictate usage of property. Um, if a homeowner wants to use their property for Airbnb, that is legal. So um, go ahead with your comments, um, Mr. Perry. Oh, just, sorry. One more thing to add on the Airbnb. Oh, okay. um, so, so yeah, so uh, we've filed our permit um, for, for our Airbnb property. We have special Airbnb insurance. Um, so we think we've done everything up to code. Um, and, and we do have a, a full-time property management company managing the property. So um, including 24 hour calls if needed. So we, we really are trying to do everything we can. Um, and like Dave said, our goal is to, to sell both properties after they're completed. I just want to make a point that even if you weren't planning on selling them, that's fine too. Go ahead, Mr. Perry. Um, yes, and uh, Chair, the, the commission noted the same thing. Um, it's it's a form of occupancy, It's it's not, relevant to land use or the zoning variances. The commission stated the same conclusion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, reasonable rate of reasonable return without a variance. Um, I think I think this is has to be considered in the context of prevailing standard. And um, clearly there's a house there. It uh, it has some economic value, but um, many Many, many splits have been granted in the Midtown area where it was felt to be appropriate as a land use and and um, uh, w without consideration of whether there is a different return or not. It's an appropriate it's an appropriate land use and consistent with um, an urban neighborhood and many, uh, many other splits have been granted. Uh, whether there's a beneficial use of the property, um, clearly. Well, there's a single family home there. It's been there a long time. The question is whether this is a is a, a better use and consistent with uh, not only the actions of the Marion Village Society on that same meeting in supporting a, a different application that was for a rear dwelling unit that that project did not propose to split the parcels, um, but split or not split, there have been many applications for additional dwelling units. Uh, whether the variance is substantial, it is not. The um, the variances actually are pretty minor. Two of them relate to simply existing conditions at the property. Uh, so I, I don't believe they're substantial, and they're certainly not substantial in the context of the of urban neighborhoods. Um, whether adjoining properties would suffer a substantial detriment, we don't believe they will. Um, there again, there are um, there are many buildings with uh, dwellings rear dwellings in the Midtown area. There are many, many split lots. Um, uh, delivery of government services, this does not affect that at all. In fact, it, relative to the driveway access, it may, may improve it with the building, uh, with the house set back 10 feet. Um, whether the property owner purchased the property with knowledge of the zoning restrictions, um, I, I, I don't know if that's the case in this instance with Mr. Marsh or not. I doubt that it was. Uh, that he had knowledge that this required a variance. Um, but regardless, in consideration of other factors with prevailing standard and practical difficulty, it um, it has to be taken in that context. Uh, whether whether the request can be solved through some other manner other than a, a variance, it, it cannot. It's the only way it can be done under the Columbus Zoning Code and whether the spirit and intent behind the zoning regulations, zoning reg, excuse me, requirements um are observed um i i think uh, the the board is well aware of of uh, many splits that have come through the board and there's even more that have gone through city council um so it, it is um it is um consistent with the spirit and intent of the zoning code as as applied to urban neighborhoods and the zoning code doesn't address urban neighborhoods very well thank you 
Okay. Board members, do we have any other questions? Okay. I'll call the question. Okay, so question has been called. Um, when you provide your answer, if you could give um, um, your comments as to because we didn't have any discussion on this, I'd just like to get your comments down in the record. Please call the roll. Mr. Maleka. Yeah, I feel uh, since there are other properties that front on the alley as well as on the other street, um, it has precedent in the area. I vote yes. Mr. Will Daly. Yeah, and I think uh, Mr. Maleka's comments were um, right on point with exactly why I'm voting uh, yes for this. Mr. DeMora. I'm voting no. I don't believe you meant enough of the Duncan factors. Okay. Mr. Jones. I am, um, first I want to say to the community that has spoken, the two young ladies that spoke out, I appreciate you sharing your position, why you feel the way that you do. It helps us clarify how we make our decision. And it may be helpful for everybody on this call because I know everybody's kind of listening and watching this decision. The whole purpose of our board is to change the code, to vary the code. If not for that, we would not be here at all. So when you speak about, you know, it's not up to code, it's not meeting code, that's why we meet here to make reasonable decisions about varying the code within reason. And, and we do that very uh, judiciously and cautiously so that we don't set bad precedent, et cetera. We can see very clearly here that the precedent is already set. Uh, we're not creating anything new. It's already in place and apparently pretty successfully. And I'll just echo the words of the chairwoman and say that, uh, again, Airbnbs have been determined to be a lawful use and we don't, they, those issues don't come before us. Um, so again, I'm gonna vote in support of this. Thank you. And Chair Palmer Bailey. Yes, yeah, so uh, while I agree that the owner of this property probably, you know, purchased the property knowing the code um, issues at hand, I think that there was no reason to believe that what was afforded other property owners similarly situated to him would not be afforded to this property. There's been other splits in this neighborhood. There are properties that um, face the alley. And so were we not to allow this, I think that we would be putting a hardship on this property owner. So for that, I say yes, variance is granted. Good luck with the project. Uh, thank you, members of the board. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Case number six, 3721 Weston Place. If the applicant is here, please take yourself off the of mute and identify your name mute. for the record. Uh, John Ebert, I'm contact for the. Uh, um, if you raise your right hand, do you swear that the testimony you give tonight with the truth, nothing but the truth? Please state I do. Okay. Do you have anyone else to speak on this issue, or is it just you? I, I think the owner's here. Yes. Is the owner here? Can you identify yourself? Yes, I'm also here. Okay. Are you Decker. Thank you, Ms. Decker. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand. You promised to testimony tonight you gave me the truth, nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, City. Jamie, um, who's talking? We can't hear you. Uh, 
Oh, sorry about that. I was trying to unmute uh, somebody else. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and get started. 3721 Weston Place is located at the southwest corner of Weston Place and Winthrop Road. The site is within the Clintonville Area Commission and Zone R3 Residential. The site is developed as a single unit dwelling on a corner lot in a residential neighborhood. The applicant proposes to construct a two-story addition to the side of the dwelling and will expand and enclose an existing porch to the north, which would be to the rear. The applicant requests a variance to reduce the required rear yard from 25% to 15.6%. Uh, the rear yard section states that every residence or principal building shall be erected so as to provide a rear yard totaling no less than 25%. Uh, the planning division has reviewed the elevations and is in full support of the proposal as they are consistent with the Clintonville Neighborhood Plan's design guidelines and the Division of Traffic Management has no comments. As of the writing of, the, of this report, no recommendation from Clintonville was submitted. However, I have since received a recommendation from Clintonville and they are recommending 100% uh, approval. City staff can recommend approval as a proposed proposal is consistent with the Clintonville Neighborhood Plan's design guidelines. Further, the variance is minimal. Uh, the existing rear yard is at 16.4% and the addition would further reduce it by less than 1% to only 15.6%. Uh, we are requesting the following conditions. Uh, the first is that the site plan will be stamped to ensure the proposed landscaping will be provided. And the second is an agreement between the neighbor to the, uh, I believe, north, or I'm sorry, the west, and the property owner is that the new landscape evergreen screening will be similar to Arborvitae or Skyrocket Juniper from southwest corner of the new addition to the northeast corner of the existing fence line. And the height of the initial trees will be between 10 feet and 12 feet. And with that, we'll turn it over to the applicant and uh, you, Madam Chair. Okay, Mr. Eberts, first off, do you agree with the conditions imposed by the city? Yeah, yes, we do. Okay, do you have anything to add about the application? I would like to uh, speak to the landscaping. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Um, Kathleen Stone and I have met on multiple occasions actually three to four occasions within the last three weeks um, to come to an agreement on a landscaping screen, which I sent to Jamie Freeze today to share with all of you. My husband and I are in agreement with putting a landscaping screen between the two properties um, so that it mitigates their concerns over our addition. Okay. Anything else to add? My only other comment is Clintonville Area Commission um, received all of our letters of support from all of our surrounding neighbors on the other side, north, south, east. I don't know if those are all shared with you folks, but we had absolute support from all of our other neighbors about our addition. So, yep. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody here to speak for or against this application? Okay, seeing no one. Board members, do we have any questions? Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having trouble hitting my unmute quick enough. That's okay. Um, I'm Kathleen Stone. I am the property owner of the neighbor to the west. My husband and I live. Okay. Can <laughs> you you promise that the testimony you give tonight will be the truth? Please say I do. I do. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to let you know that I am in on in on the call, and um, we are the neighbors that are directly adjacent to the property and to the west. Um, we did have very many concerns about the addition based on the height of the height, the width, and the very close proximity to the existing fence line and the property line, um, and are very much happy with the agreement that we've. Uh, that's Tom and Suzanne have agreed to the landscaping that does mitigate many of our concerns. So I just wanted to speak up and say that I'm here and we have worked um, diligently together, all of us to come up with something that would be, you know, serve everybody's mutual goals. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else here? Okay, board members, do we have any questions? I'll call the question. 
Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Weldelli. I believe Mr. Weldelli had to leave the meeting. So. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Demora. Yes. Mr. Jones. Mr. Monica. Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey. Yes, Vance Granite, good luck with the project. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, 2786 Walcut Road. 2786 Walcut Road. I think this is you again, Mr. Perry. Uh, yes, it is. And the uh, again, I'm consulting on this application. The um, applicant, American Marine Express uh, Principal Bill Ostrander, is also on the call. Okay, Mr. Ostrander, if you can take yourself off of mute and state your name for the record. Hello. Okay, if you're going to speak later on, then we'll swear you in later on. Go ahead, city, with the presentation. I've already sworn you in, Mr. Perry, so okay. move on. Okay, thank you very much. Um, this is case BZA 20-098, 2786 Walcott Road. It is located on the east side of Walcott Road, approximately 1,350 feet north of Roberts Road. It is in the area that's served by the Far West Area Commission, and they recommend approval of the requests. Uh, again, this is, in this instance, uh, the applicant is requesting a uh, special permit for a portable building and uh, variances to uh, the parking area for uh, the parking of uh, trucks. The uh, office building would be used uh, for a temporary period of time uh, uh, for not more than two years as the applicant has agreed to that as a condition also. Um, and the other variances are pertinent to parking, uh, landscaping and screening, striping and marking of the parking area, uh, the uh, required surface, which is currently gravel, and uh, wheel stop devices. Um, the uh, city staff has uh, reviewed uh, the application, of course, and um, the Division of Planning uh, states that they support the request, that the uh, parking area is well screened from the public right-of-way and from the residential uses that are across uh, to the west of Walcott Road, as you can see on the site plan. The uh, Division of Traffic Management states that the right -of they need a right-of-way dedication, again, typical for this sort of situation. So the city staff is recommending approval of the request with the condition that the special permit be limited to a period not to exceed two years. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Perry. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the uh, application is as stated by staff. The um, Property is located on the western edge of a large industrial area. There are warehouse and industrial uses to the north, south, and east. Walcott Road is on the west. Um, the applicant, American Marine Express, is uh, presently leasing a portion of the property and uh, proposes the portable building as an office trailer uh, that that lease is uh, is a lease option, and the uh, hope is to purchase the property in less than two years. So the uh, request is to permit the portable building um, as an office office trailer use for the two year period. Um, it may it may be less than that, and then the the gravel parking area, um, American Marine Express and their civil engineer found 
on submittal of the site of a site compliance plan that uh, the gravel gravel area was not uh, previously approved, and the request is to allow it to remain. Um, the uh, current property owner purchased the property in 2015, and in reviewing uh, aerial photography, the uh, gravel uh, predates that substantially. It uh, started to show up in 2004, and then by um, by 2011 or so was the uh, area that is presently gravel. So it predates um, the American Express, American Marine Express uh, lease, and also predates the current property owner. American Marine is a uh, over the road uh, trucking company and um, has uh, vehicles and trailers, chassis um, coming and going from the property. So the request is to leave the gravel area. It is well buffered from Walcott Road and the uh, neighborhood to the west by a approximately 60 foot wide existing tree and low shrubbery area parallel to Walcott Road. And it is our commitment that that would remain with this application. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anybody here to speak about this application? Board members, do we have any other questions? I'll call the question. Okay, questions have been called. Please call the roll. Mr. DeMora? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Maleka? Yes. Chair Palmer Bailey? Yes. A special permit and variance granted. Uh, Chair, may I, add, may I add one thing? I just have a text message from Bill Ostrander that he was uh, uh, on the meeting and um, having difficulties of some manner and wasn't able to acknowledge your request from him, but uh, he was uh, listening. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Next case, 506 Klein Street. Is the applicant here? Take yourself off of mute and state your name for the record. Uh, Dominic Jones. Okay. Is anybody else here with you, Mr. Jones? <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm Ashley Ingram, attorney for Applicant Legacy View. Okay. Uh, if I can have both of you raise your right hands. You swear the testimony you give tonight will be the truth, nothing but the truth. Please state I do. I do. I do. I do. We'll have the city present first, and then we'll turn it over to you. Michael, you're on mute. <laughs> I'm not hearing anything. I mean, the, yeah. I can't hear. We can't hear any. Sorry, we're in a little trouble here. Give me one second. <laughs> Michael, you good? All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. I'm we're socially distancing and the guy that his computer I'm on decided to log in and kick me out of my session <laughs> <laughs> from home. So all right. BZA 20-099 at 506 Klein Street. 
in your supplemental email today, uh, you received two letters of opposition to this uh, variant proposal. Uh, neither of them said that they would be able to attend the meeting tonight, so you'll just have to go by their written um, opposition. This property is zoned C4 commercial district. Uh, the 0 0.11 acre site is developed entirely with a warehouse building. Directly surrounding the site are predominantly single and multi-unit dwellings along with commercial buildings on the Parsons Avenue corridor. The applicant proposes to repurpose the warehouse building for an athletic training facility. A variance to the required number of parking spaces is needed as no parking is able to be provided on the site and the required parking count is increasing due to the conversion. The variance is to reduce the minimum number of additional parking spaces required from 14 to zero. The near south side plan states that parking reductions are appropriate within the Parsons Avenue corridor where access to transit is available and to provide landscaping where applicable. Planning is therefore supportive of the proposal as the applicant is committed to providing bike parking and a street tree. The Division of Traffic Management has no comments. Um, the recommendation from the Southside Area Commission was received today and uh, they recommended approval 11 to zero. In summary, staff can recommend approval of the proposed parking reduction as the near south side plan states that parking reductions are appropriate along the Parsons Avenue corridor where access to transit is available. And we have the condition that the applicant shall provide, provide bike parking in the form of one U rack and a street tree. And I believe they have said that they are amenable to that. Um, I'm I'm sorry. Put put up the picture again. The fifty six, I think it is. Street view or the aerial? Uh, fifty six. The next one. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So there's no parking there now. Is what we're saying. Yeah. The the site is one hundred percent building. <laughs> and so. Okay, so why? Because the, because the gym or athletic training facility parking ratio is higher than what it was previously utilized for, they need a variance. Ah, for okay. The okay. So the, the previous owners already had a variance for their use? I believe it was probably legal non-conforming. But in this case, you just have to make up the difference. Okay. But you're making up everything, right? Because there's none. But it was zero to begin with. <laughs> That's what's kind of perplexing to me. So I guess you guys will get to a point where you explain why we think it's okay other than it being in the Parsons corridor. I'll let Mr. Hayes uh, explain how they uh, evaluate their parking variances. Thank you. Michael, can you go back to the version that I can see the streets? Like the picture before that? Yeah, so is, no, no, the other one, the, the one you just had. I mean, is there parking? I mean, I, I, it looks like there's a couple spaces on what looks to be Parsons. I mean, is there is there legal parking on on the yeah. side streets or any of that other stuff? I mean, there's, there's street parking around that area. I don't know how readily available it is as this is, you know, a neighborhood. Right, I mean, is there, is the, is the side, is there, is there parking on Klein Street allowed? Yeah, there's on street parking, as you can see there. I don't know if those cars are moving or parked, so that's why I didn't, I, I can't really tell. I think they're all parked. And then what's this, what is, is this an alley behind it? Is there parking on that alley? There would not be a parking on that alley. Okay. Okay, I think Mr. Hayes, you, a question was, was lobbed your way. 
Um, yeah, this site uh, didn't meet the trigger for a parking study. Um, so parking services really would have no comment. The division of traffic management were just saying that, you know, if we, um, based on the proposed uses of the building and anticipated users of the facility, the proposed use is not anticipated to provide um, to create any significant impact to the parking demand in the area. But once again, it uh, did not meet the, the minimum threshold to require the parking study as of the rules and regulations we've initiated. Um, so we had basically no comment on the site. It's not a, not a large enough variance. It looks like one of the people that submitted a letter is here if they'd like to um, speak, but both of the, uh, the opposition letters, it seemed like were, uh, they were worried that tenants or people going to the gym would be parking on their, uh, their rental property parking areas rather than um, on the street. Yeah. There seemed to be a concern about parking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ingram or Mr. Jones, um, who's going to speak? Um, I can go. Uh, okay. Dr. Starters off. So first off, again, thanks everybody for charming. I know it's been a long night. Um, so uh, Legacy U, just in just in general, fill you in. Legacy U uh, is a program um, that we develop uh, to poor teen youth. So that's who we service. Uh, we provide life skill development uh, pieces. Uh, so when we say athletic training facility, we really just wanted to offer um, free baseball uh, coaching. And, and, and this is a startup for kids who never played baseball, for kids who's never played soccer, um, maybe who never played uh, flat football, et cetera. So it's really a one-on-one -on -one based, uh, small group based uh, training just to get kids started. Obviously, uh, with kids not in school right now and as well, in that neighborhood particularly, um, you know, it would be a safe space for them to come to and be able to participate as well. Um, we've built some great relationships with South High School um, and the library. We have ran a lot of our classes out of the main library. So as we started to uh, converse with uh, the guys across the street um, at the library and South High School, uh, they've been um, more than open, uh, you know, to, to, you know, however they can assist us and help us. Um, most of our uh, work takes place in the evening time. Um, so I was talking to the coaches and stuff over at South. I mean, so parking at, at South High School will also be available. Um, they wouldn't mind us uh, going over there, uh, which is really just not even a full block up, you know, a short walk. Um, but then also, like I said before, we you know, we do have some kids in the area from South High School uh, who we currently work with, and those kids will be riding their bikes to us. Um, so just kind of giving a quick overview of kind of what we do and kind of what we've been thinking about. Okay. So I did. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of look at this almost like a daycare facility. I know it's all the children, children, but it sounds more like it's coming to you and the, the drop off and the, the need for parking probably isn't as great as what we might have been led to believe with the gym because we know people aren't going to catch the bus to the gym. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for that clarification. That helped me a lot. And I would like to add, um, definitely, uh, Mr. Jones, what you said, we are imagining parents dropping kids off, kids being able to maybe ride the bus, ride their bike to, to the facility. Um, you all can take a look at what Legacy do youth, uh, you does now. And again, the primary focus is working with, with youth. Um, and then Dominic mentioned the relationship um, that Legacy U has uh, started with the library. And so there have been conversations about being able to use the library parking lots in the evening um, when the library, you know, closes pretty early. How far away is that library? It's right across Parsons. Park Street. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And lastly, to one thing, I mean, at least as of right now, too, you know, with COVID and everything like that, we're not even allowed to, parents can't even stay, you know, so we have to have small group numbers as well, so. Well, that's now, but hopefully we're going to come out of COVID <laughs> right? and we'll be back to our normal lives, comings and goings. Okay. Is anybody here to speak um, about this project? One second, Bill. I'll see you. Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Moore. Yeah, I just want to make, so the library, you talk about it across the street in South High School is a block away and, and, you, and because, I mean, you obviously don't know, but I, I'm very concerned about parking in neighborhoods because I live in the worst parked neighborhood in the city. So that's always been my concern. Um, 
and I'm I'm willing to take both of you that um, that if the library and school are amenable and most of your stuff is in the evenings and I'm I'm less worried about about it. But 14 spots again going from going to zero and you know with the neighbors with the letters that we've received, I, I said I just want to make sure that you guys have. I mean, you guys are working with South High School and the library for sure, and and hopefully that. I mean, listen, obviously not now because of COVID, but uh, again, we usually flag football and other activities that normally refers to a lots of lots of people. And if all of them are going to have cars, then that's a prop. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we we've uh, we definitely with the help of the Southside Commission uh, so far, Mr. Ted Welsh and everybody, Beth, uh, Ms. Beth, they they've been extremely helpful um, in introducing us and, you know, kind of ingratiating us into the neighborhood already. Um, so, and, um, you know, but we'll be able to use that to your point. It is after hours, our flag football, it's not like an actual team or anything like that. It's more so just one-on-one -on -one instructional on, Hey, this is how you pull the flag up. This is for this. So there's no actual games or anything going on like that. So, okay. you know, we really anticipate that, that, that much higher of a traffic as well. And we don't have any morning hours, you know, there's nothing that we're really doing in the morning, um, where kids are coming in. Um, so, you know, again, those more hours will be, um, at the nighttime. And Bill, just so you know, I've worked with Miss Ingram before, and I trust her right now that if she's going to give us her word that she'll make sure that all of these things are addressed, I would go with that. That works for me. <laughs> Thank you. Huge endorsement. Can you clarify again what, what the building's use was prior to what you taking over? It was a, uh, it was a, it was a um, really just a, a garage that they use, uh, paint primer. The guys who own the building, they you know they park trucks in there. They used to paint inside of there. Um, so really nothing real high, high traffic wise or anything like that. They just you know, use it for storage of other equipment and to uh, paint big objects. Okay, thank you. Hmm? Okay, seeing no one else here to speak about this application, are you ready to call the question? I'll call the question. Question has been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Jones. Now, you know the rule, Dave. You're not supposed to call me first when I call the question, but I'll go <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just trying to be nice. <laughs> uh, Mr. Maleka. Yes. Mr. Demora. Well, I will take Mr. Jones and thus um them at their word and to vote yes okay and chair palmer bailey yes vance is granted good luck with the project thank you all thank you all i guess just just for understanding the process purposes it's like what's the next step after this for us nothing I'll, I'll be tomorrow <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you Okay, next case, 1114 Camden Avenue. If the applicant is here, please take yourself off of mute and state your name for the record. I'm Bob Lester. How you doing, Mr. Lester? Is anybody else here with you? Um, I believe Steve Hermiller is here if needed. Uh, he's with uh, Mannequin Smith, a civil engineer. Mr. Hermiller, are you here? I am, yes. Okay. If you both will raise your right hands, I will swear you in. You promise to tell the truth, nothing but the truth in your testimony tonight. Please state I do. I do. I do. Okay. We'll hear from the city first, then we'll come back to you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So BZA 20-101 at 1114 Camden Avenue, located at the terminus of Camden Avenue, approximately 920 feet east of St. Clair Avenue. This property is zoned in the M Manufacturing District. The 5 acres are currently undeveloped. Surrounding uses consist of a mixture of single unit dwellings, apartments, and manufacturing areas. Rail lines border the development to the north and east. The applicant proposes to develop the parcel with a warehouse and industrial park. A variance is requested to reduce the storage setback of materials adjacent to residential property from 100 to 30 feet and from other lot lines 
from 20 feet to zero feet as shown on the site plan. From the citywide planning policies and the Milo Grogan plan stress the importance of mitigating commercial impacts on residential uses. They also state that where these items or these uses abut adequate buffering in the form of mounding and vegetation to be installed to reduce impacts such as lighting. Planning is therefore supportive of the proposal as the applicant has provided adequate mounding and screening alongside adjacent residential uses, as well as additional information, landscaping capacity, storage. The applicant has provided information that approximately 40 trucks would be anticipated to leave the site in the morning and return in the afternoon or evening. 25% of these trucks would be anticipated to be box trucks, flatbed trucks, or semi trucks. The remainder would be medium duty and additional site traffic is anticipated to be surface vans and personal vehicles. Based on this information, a traffic impact study will not be required. For this application, the Division of Traffic Management has no further comments. Uh, the recommendation for this project was received today and uh, the Milo Grogan Area Commission voted to approve the proposal nine to one. Staff can recommend approval to reduce storage setback as the applicant has provided adequate mounding and screening alongside adjacent residential uses in accordance with the Columbus Citywide Planning Policies and Milo Grogan Area Plan. And we have the conditions that the applicant shall commit to the stamped site plan and landscape plan in your staff reports. And I'll stress that this is only for um, permitted manufacturing industrial uh, storage areas. This isn't for junk or salvage or anything like that. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. I'm turning it back over to the applicant. I'm not sure who's gonna speak first. Is it Mr. Lester or? Yeah, Mr. this Lester. is uh, Bob. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to thank you for your time. And um, what we're asking for is a, a setback along the railroad property from 20 feet to zero feet for storage and along the residential area from 100 feet that is required uh, down to 30 feet. And the 30 feet would be a, a four foot tall mound with uh, evergreen trees and landscaping. Uh, as shielding uh, against the story. Okay. And take any questions if you guys have them. I assume you agree to the conditions. Yes, we agree to the conditions. Is there anybody here that wants to speak about this application? Okay, not seeing anybody. Do we have, hello? I was gonna call a question. Oh, okay. Question's been called, please call the roll. Mr. DeMora? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yeah. Mr. Maleka? Yes. <clears throat> Chair Palmer Bailey? Yes, variance has been granted Good luck with the project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Rice's last case of the, his career at the Columbus City, 1675 Scottsdale Avenue. Uh, John Gleason uh, here on behalf of the property. Uh, uh, John and Debbie are one as well. We are present, yes. Okay, if I can have you both raise your hand and promise that the testimony you give tonight with the truth, nothing but the truth, please state I do. I do. Okay, perfect. We'll hear from the city first and then over to you. So I did that 30 some years ago and it kind of got into trouble. Come on. Uh, that's not good. No, nah, it's okay. I'm still with her. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. 
1675 Scottsdale Avenue is located at the southeast corner of Scottsdale Avenue and Mercer Street, served by the Northwest Civic Association. It's zoned R1 residential. The quarter acre site is developed with a single unit dwelling and privacy fence installed in the front yard. The 67% opaque fence has been in its current location since 2001 and a violation notice was issued in September 2020. Surrounding uses are all single family uh, dwellings. The applicant proposes to legitimize the location of the privacy fence within the front yard along Mercer Street. The variance is to allow a fence exceeding two and a half feet in height to exceed 25% opacity when located in a required yard along Mercer Street. The Northwest Area Plan recommends that street trees be provided as part of a new development and screening should be provided. The addition of one street tree along Mercer in coordination with the City Forester is consistent with plan recommendation and is requested by Planning Division. Traffic management states that it would appear that intersection site distance and site distance for adjacent driveways would not be adversely affected by the requested variance. The Northwest Civic Association uh, recommends approval of this request. City departments recommend approval as the site distance for the intersection or for adjacent driveways uh, does not appear to be an issue. We recommend the condition that the applicant add one street tree along Mercer Street in coordination with the city forester. Madam Chair. Okay. Um... Mr. Gleason, do you agree with the condition about planting a tree? Actually, at, at this point, we do not. Um, I mean, we're more than happy to work with uh, the city. I will indicate that uh, the whole issue here was um, vision clearance. And so adding a, the seemed contradictory to that. The area commission did not require it. And I will mention that I did speak with planning today um, and, uh, you know, express the, the issue. And, and I apologize. I was actually in the hospital all last week with COVID. So, uh, but they did get back to me today and they indicated that their response to this would now be no comment. What? I'm sorry, the response to what? To, to the question of requiring a tree. Oh, to requiring a tree. Planning. Uh, because again, the whole concept was that it was vision clearance, um, you know, because the fence, although there's 40 feet where the fence stops and by um, adding a tree would, although probably not cause too much of an issue, it did seem contradictory. And um, so planning did advise me today by an email, which I can forward um, that um, their, their response would be no comment. I'm, yeah, I'm so please, confused. please go ahead and forward that email. I did not receive anything from planning about changing their comment, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Because to um, me, that sounds like that's the trade-off. <laughs> you know, yeah, yes, we'll um, go along with it if you do X. <laughs> um. So explain this to us how the how the fence got to be there? I think it was it was added um, 20 years ago. Um, and I think this is a whole issue that has come up. There have been several of these cases with the uh, with the commission. Um, but again, I'll, I'll defer to um, um, John and Debbie, you know, if they don't have a problem adding the tree, you know, we can work with planning to do that. The um we had put in the fence about 20 years ago, um, I think a year or two after we had moved in to have a place for our son to play outside. Um, a company by the name of Lee's Fencing had originally put it in. Um, I think we had asked at that time if it could be moved out. It was parallel with the side of the house. Uh, according to Lee's at that time, there was no issue. We assumed that they were correct and went ahead with moving the fence out. And as John has said, the fence has been there for uh, now coming up on 20 years. 
As far as putting a tree in, we would be certainly fine to put in another tree on Mercer. There are two small trees there now that were put in maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, the only concern I would have with putting another tree in would be to make sure that, A, we didn't uh, get into the easement area if we put it in uh, back, or that it get in the way of the stoplight or stop sign, which is near Scottsdale. The way the trees are situated right now, they're kind of at um, one-third and two-thirds of the way up the side yard. So it's kind of proud where we would have to put in another one. But again, I'm more than happy to put in another tree. Um, City, did you have a, a designation of where you wanted this tree to go? Can you put it up on the screen and give us a little bit more context? So planning did not recommend a, an actual location, which is why they consistently recommend coordination with the city forester. And just to add a note about consistency, um, there's a the exact same variance request from a property adjacent to the south because their fence is, has the same situation and planning's comment is exactly the, the same as far as adding the trees with uh, in coordination with the city forester. So, and as far as the tree uh, and the vision clearance, the trees, um, street trees don't pose uh, an issue for vision clearance because of the height of the leaves. Then that's fine. And John and Debbie, if you're willing to do it, um, sure. we will we will that condition. Okay. So in coordinating with the city forester, that will be where their recommended location is to not interfere with anything else is going on. Okay. Um, is there anybody here that wishes to speak about this application? It, if I may just, uh, just to finalize this, uh, working with force, the, the forester, um, as long as he or she says, put it here and we're okay with that. We don't need to come back and receive another approval or get anything like that. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. That's all I wanted to confirm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, is there no one else here to speak on this issue? Are we ready to call the question? I'll call the question. Question's been called. Please call the roll. Mr. Maleka? Yes. Mr. DeMora? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yeah. Chair Palmer Bailey? So my vote is no, but the variant still passes. Good luck with the project and the tree passing, tree planting. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. So, Mr. Rice, I don't know if we want to make some official statements about your um, retirement, but you have been a great partner and presenter, explainer, clarifier, uh, teacher of the code. Um, wisdom is going to be missed for sure. Well, thank you very much. And um, um, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, you've been wonderful to work with um, and your predecessors as well. Uh, has been uh, a wonderful experience. I've learned an awful lot, and I'm glad that I was able to offer something to all of you that's, that's appreciated. So I'm going to miss you all very much, but uh, I will certainly... Um, uh, I, I'm looking forward to a new uh, venture in my life now. So it's time after 42 years, you know. <laughs> so, wow. What's on the horizon, I, Dave? I, I, I ran across some papers the other day, and uh, one of them had 1990 written on it. And um, so it was in 1990 that I started with this zoning, but I actually came to work for the city of Columbus in January of uh, 1979. So, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. 
So you enjoy enjoy your pension, I should say. I will. <laughs> sure. Got a nice. Got a nice. Much. What's on the horizon, Dave? What's on the horizon? Well, the first thing is I got to get my house cleaned up. <laughs> I've, I've lived in my house for the past 28 years, and it's accumulated a lot of stuff that closets and drawers and things need to be cleaned out. And I hope to travel a little bit, too. I'm looking forward to that as a possibility when all this other stuff gets over with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. I want right. to say thank um, you. We, we said thank you uh, at our last meeting. I want to say it again, Dave. You've been absolutely great to work with. Um, you know, I, I you know I call all the time and have clients call you and Jamie all the time. So I just appreciate you always being there. Uh, I guess now for Michael and Phil, get ready. Whoever's going to draw the short straw, you're my backup <laughs> after Jamie. So just be ready. <laughs> and we'll have to figure out who's going to call the roll from now on too. I think maybe. I know. <laughs> Big job. Hey, Dave, since it's your last meeting, I do have to tell you this, though. Eric's last name is Weldley, and you haven't pronounced it right since he's been on the board. And, and, and Eric and I Eric and I laugh every time you call his name because it's Weldley. So I just had to, I just had to say that. And I thought, I've been, I, all this time, I've been meaning to ask Eric because every now that I see it on the screen, I'm like, yeah. okay, how are we getting that? That pronouncement <laughs> from those letters, but okay. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, it, it's kind of like the name Rice. You know, people have a problem with R E I S S. It's always Reese, or it's always, I, I get all kinds of variations too. So, That's uh, but I do apologize for, for that. <laughs> we'll have to tell him since he got off early. Yeah, yeah. Please, please let him know that uh, I'm sincerely sorry. Right. <laughs> oh no, it was a, it was the longest running joke. We had the most fun with it. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Well, good. So hey, at, least, at least you got some fun out of it. <laughs> so, question for staff: What's the 2021 plan for these meetings? Have you guys come up with a plan yet, or what? Well, there's no plan now. Uh, we were talking at the beginning of December when uh, the, the state legislation, whatever, to to allow us to meet virtually was set to expire, but they've since extended it another six months. Um, word in the house is that the mayor is in no rush to get anyone back in the office okay. or in a public section. So we're, uh, you know, month by month for now, um, you know, at the, the issues we have with people on the phone and not knowing how to do a WebEx meeting is pretty annoying, so the sooner we can get back, the better, I think. But until then, we'll just have to have uh, you guys drop the hammer on them and tell them to do it the right way, and we'll go from there. I mean, I feel bad for people because, uh, you know, they, they've taken the time to dial in or, you know, get on, and I don't want us to not be able to to hear them. So I do try to wait until they can get their technology issues resolved. And that's yeah, it's very very kind of you. The way you're so so patient, quite doing with a the, great job. Yeah, there's and they can say to be upset because you are very gracious with your time. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess I'll see you guys next month. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody. Um. Merry Christmas. We'll see you in 2021 for whatever <laughs> we're doing. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Dave Paul. Oh, he's a. He's gonna show off there. Wow. All kinds of fancy stuff. He must have a premium account. Right. I'm like, I don't even know where to do all that. And look at Michael. What is this? Oh, there's like a little guy right here. Reactions. Here it is. Reactions. There you go. Nice. What have we started? Oh, hey, I just straight on the meet. We'll be work. doing this in the meetings next time. That's right. <laughs> Dave, I just want to say on behalf of Northland <clears throat> and perhaps generally, thanks very much. Enjoyed working with you. You've been a great help to all of us. Well, thank you. Thank okay. You. Back at that. Right. <laughs> Some happy holidays. Tony's in on the farm now, too. <laughs> okay, see you guys.